personally, I don't think this car will lose to any of its competitors at this price range. Hey guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. This is the all new MG3. This is the all new product for MG New Zealand and Australia market. In today's video, I'll go through this particular vehicle. This is the MG3 hybrid top spec named Essence. Look at the lines. So everything has been changed from this generation. It's a completely new product compared to the old MG3 you know on the market. And particularly the most important change is this hybrid drivetrain. First thing, let's go through the exterior dimensions. The exterior dimension on this vehicle is just over 4.1 meters long, close to 1.8 meters wide, with a wheelbase at 2.57 meters. That means this vehicle is longer, wider, and has a longer wheelbase compared to the last generation. The height remains the same. From the exterior, this finishing the red metallic finish, but there are seven colors available in the New Zealand market. At the front, we have new grille, plus the new LED headlights, MG called this Hunting Eyes. So we got full LED available on this Essence spec. That's the black trim piece with some chrome and plastic panels over here. New MG logo, of course. On the side, we have 16-inch alloys, two-tone finish available on the Essence spec. Looks cool, for sure. There are some creasing lines over here. The whole shape is quite unique, but it's just like normal average car for a standard small to medium sized hatchback. And at the back, we have the black painted LED tail lights available on this top spec again. M23 hybrid logo just down there. Opening the boot, manual tailgate. We have 297 liters boot space when the seats are up. Underneath, because this is a hybrid drivetrain, we have the 12 volt battery at the back, plus some mobility kit, there's no space saver. You do have some additional storage over here, so that's a plus. There's a puzzle shelf on the top. Let's drop the seats just to look at when the seats are totally down. So the small annoying thing about the new generation, there's no splitting seats anymore. So it's one piece seat dropping. You will actually need to jump into the seat. So pull the handle on both sides. That allows us to drop it. So there is a hump over here, but the total volume is close to 1,100 liters on the total space floor. So still very, very useful for medium to small size hatchback. Now behind the driver's seat, we got a nice leather and the fabric contrast seats in the center. They are quite long actually, you can see the base. That means the created longer wheelbase will have a really nice experience at the back. This seat base is definitely longer than the previous generation. Let's step inside. All right, so front is my sitting position. I'm about 178 centimeters tall. I've got really good foot room, really good leg room, nearly a palm size or half a palm size. And my headroom is okay. I'm not touching the roof, but I'm close. Someone who is six foot tall will be okay sitting at the back of this. Behind the seats, there are air vents, USB charging, which never exist on the previous generation. There's no armrest, which is annoying. Quite a lot of MG cars don't have that, but you do have small pockets behind the rear seats. The stitchings around the seats are sort of orange color on this vehicle. Closing the door, still reasonable, solid. It's definitely sound better compared to the last one and there are quite a lot of plastic around the door bins it's not a premium vehicle of course for its build quality on the door side all right this is the front seat looks like steel fabric in the center leather on the side manual adjustments if you go to the base model you may only get full fabric seats but the seats are still supportive let's step inside first thing you'll notice is push button start we finally got push button start on the new MG3. Next thing is how nice this interior layout is. It's still, still simple, but it's great. It works, everything works. On the door side, that's cheap plastic, but all the cabins and these are all nice sort of soft interior or leather wrapped interior. In the center console, quite solid material, but that plasticky, it's fun, it's fun. It's for this price range, it's fun. 
On this Essence pack, we got the sort of flat top and flat bottom steering, just like what you get on the MG4, or the buttons and controls are identical to the MG4 as well. The digital dash is the same size as the MG4, 7 inch to be exact. The logic and controlling things are identical as well. In the center, we have the new 10.25 inch display. It sits a little bit low on the dashboard. You can see that's the dashboard and this is the screen. They only have this amount of gap that popping on top. So it does not block anything over the view. I really love that small touch. And overall response time, pretty good. It's way better than last generation. It's identical to the MG4, maybe just a little bit better than MG4. You get climbing control in this particular screen and you do have the new 360 camera. Where do you find 360 camera on the small hatchback in this price range? Frankly, you don't. Um, other things, you get vehicle settings and additionally, you get MG Pilot. These come with the full MG Pilot system, including land change assist, including adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, speed sign recognition, plus all the functions you need for daily drive. And hopefully this car will get the five star safety rating. On top of that, the vehicle come with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both are wired underneath through the cable. You get some physical buttons over here to quickly change a few things and air vents located underneath. In the center, we have 12 volt socket in the center, USB-C charging on the right and USB-A connection or charging for your phones, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Two cup holders over here and you have a small delight slider and this slider is actually really cool. You can do left or right so you can see the three gaps over here. That's smart. Center control panel, because this is the hybrid, we do get the unique electric gear shifter. Twist left and right, push it down. You get automatic handbrake, that's all. Mode button, you actually can change different driving mode on the new one now. You don't get that on the old one, never, never. In the center console, very long armrest, and that's the, again, never happened in the last generation. Opening this up, we get small storage over here, but we do have a slider. Just like that. You do also have a divider. You can divide this to the front and to the back. I love that small touch. Interior wise, glove box, still decent. And um, some storage door bins on the door side. So yeah, build quality on this vehicle. It's not super premium, but it leaves us to its price. Or it probably even better than some of the competitors on the market because of its equipment. And compared to the last generation, this one works much, much better. In terms of pricing on the new MG3 for New Zealand market, I do not know the pricing just yet. We will know by the time I release this particular video. So I'll leave the first comment on this video to let you know the New Zealand specification and pricing. If you're looking to purchase one of these vehicles, well, why don't you contact me at Abit MG in Auckland, New Zealand. I will be able to assist you on your purchase, finance, trading, anything like that. So I'll leave all my contact details down on the screen. Now let's get started to see how this goes. All right, we are ready to go. First thing, let's talk about visibility. On this new one, it's identical to the last generation. The sloping roof line at the back does shrink the rear windscreen just by a small amount, but it doesn't affect that much. From left, from the right. It's pretty good. Nothing is blocking us for majority part of this view inside. So let's go through some of the power stats on this particular vehicle. The most important part is the drivetrain. On the new MG3 that's available in New Zealand, we are actually getting two different powertrains. One is the 1.5 liter natural aspirate CVT transmission. We are going to review that vehicle in the future when the vehicle is available. The second one is this one. This is the 1.5 petrol motor plus the hybrid battery and motor at the back. The petrol motor at the front produces 74 kilowatts of power and the electric motor at the back produces 100 kilowatts in terms of power. Combined, you are getting 144 kilowatts of power and 313 newton meters of torque. This amount of power and torque is a lot when you compare to any competitors on the market. That makes this vehicle has an official 0 to 100 rating around 8 seconds. 
Again, that's pretty fast. If you're looking at the vehicle around $30,000 or under $30,000 mark, you don't generally get these power numbers or acceleration at all. Let's go into the sport mode just to see how it's like. Well, HEV mode, quite rough seal, of course. Do a rolling start from 20, one, two, three. It's not bad. We aren't going to 100Ks just yet. We hopefully will test it soon. But yeah, acceleration is very smooth. You can go sport, normal or eco mode whenever you like. And apart from the mode, you actually have a regeneration braking system available on the hybrid drivetrain. In many, many particular standard hybrid vehicles, you are not able to change that. The vehicle does not allow you to change how heavy it brakes, things like that. It just have a standard level where on this vehicle, you are able to change that. Go into the car setting, go under the driving, you're able to change it to low, medium or high. Right now, we're on medium. Let's go to high just to quickly test from 50. Let's slow it down. But now I'm not pressing the accelerator at all. The vehicle slow down just like that. It, the slowdown motion is just like what you expect on a full electric vehicle, but this time, this is a hybrid. Again, if you do not like it, change to medium or low, that's totally up to you. In that way, it actually generates more power back to the battery that helps with the regeneration. And of course, that will help with the efficiency. And now we're switching back to the sport mode again. Let's do a little bit more acceleration over here, just to see how it will go. There's no one behind me, of course. All right, rolling start from the auto hold, one, two, three. It's good, there's no traction issue at all. Whoa, we reached 80 pretty fast. I don't know the exact timer, of course. I don't have the particular fancy machine to test this, but that's good. In terms of sitting position, it's pretty comfortable. The seats are supportive. I love the seats to be fabric. I'm not a big fan of leather, or at least cheap leather in some way. So this one works fine. I do feel the ergonomics on these seats are better than the last generation. Handles well, the, the particular chassis on this is quite solid as you can see I mean we are driving on a very very rough country road handling on corners it's pretty sharp it may not be as sporty as the MG4 due to its weight or due to its front wheel drive not rear wheel drive but it handles really well around these corners of New Zealand country. Look at that. AT passing by that corner is still very confident. And after these corners, let's go through the hybrid battery again. So the battery system is actually has an active cooling system, also a battery management system. So that helps with the efficiency. That makes the thermal management system can achieve a efficiency around 41%. At the same time, the fuel consumption on this vehicle is rated to be 4.1 liter per 100 Ks. And that's certainly very, very impressive. It's just effortless around acceleration on this small chassis, small vehicle. Look at the acceleration, so smooth, it's so relaxing to drive as well. And I genuinely love this steering handling, it, it works really well on the MG4. Uh, on the MG3, personally, I think this has shrank just a little bit on the size, that help with the smaller, you know, body size overall. By the same time, it, it works. Now we are in sort of a country to urban driving road. Uh, we're driving at low speed. I've shifted the vehicle into eco mode. As you can see, the battery is half charged. We got around 50% charge on the battery. The vehicle is driving on pure EV. Libio acceleration, no sound at all, no petrol motor. That means 
under the city driving conditions while the battery is charged you are able to drive this vehicle on very very effective efficient mode you do not have to do anything prep going to eco or going to normal allows the vehicle to automatically shift to EV mode there's no sound it performs quite like an EV but when you need the power when you put your foot down or when you go to the sport mode the vehicle will automatically go into the H EV mode which is your hybrid drivetrain that means it will kick in the petrol motor and we're still driving on pure EV let's say when we go into the petrol this is called, of course, Eco. We are going 70 on pure EV now. And we're still going. Now it changed to HEV. That's pretty impressive. It can maintain EV mode up to about 70 to 80 Ks on the speed. And even the petrol motor kicks in, you do not get much of a noise from the petrol motor. There are quite some road noise. These roads are very, are very rough. Being a small car, it's going to be a little bit more noisier than some of the SUVs you can find, where it's going to be a little bit noisier than the MG4. But considering its price tag, it's certainly acceptable for, for its performance and for its road noise and things. Let's go back to normal which again, the vehicle still maintains the EV mode while we are driving at low speed. Finally, we are going on a nicer sort of road layout. You can see the EV now. The other thing I wish to mention is when you are driving on EV mode, also when you are reversing, there is some sort of whining noise coming from the electric motor or potentially this is artificial sound that of course helping with the warning the pedestrians warning people around you if you're in a car park or some sort but this is of course understandable for an, an EV or HEV or hybrid vehicle Handles quite well. It's quite solid. It's quite planted on the corners. I can't. It's not like super sporty to push you behind the seats, but it is responsive. It is very very smooth. The vehicle comes with a three-stage transmission. Although it sounds like a three-speed transmission, it's not really really three-speed because this is a particular hybrid, so they're using a very different technology to convert the transmission through different, sort of, let's say, gears, if they do have the three gears. Yeah, I just, personally, I don't think this car will lose to any of its competitors at this price range, in terms of drive, in terms of handling, in terms of how good this chassis is, even in terms of the acceleration. Look at that. Ooh. I'm genuinely impressed how MG managed to do this vehicle and make the change as a, such a big improvement over the last generation. But in most cases, these are all finished in good ways. Brake is still really sporty performance level. Let's do another acceleration, rolling start from 30 over here. One, two, three on sport mode. There we go. Whew. It's not bad, it's not bad. Certainly it's not going to compete with anything like Golf GTI. But if you're comparing this to any other little hybrid vehicles on the market, this works really, really well.
And that's the last bit of this video. I hope you enjoyed the contents. If you do, do not forget to subscribe and like. That would be really, really helpful for the channel. Uh, in the future, I will do the MG3 petrol version and even I'll show you all the features on this vehicle since I work in an MG dealership in Auckland, New Zealand. And since you're watching this video, if you're interested in purchasing one, why not contact me at abitmg. I'll leave all my contact details down below on the screen. My name is Jerry. I will see you next video. Thank you very much.